small workspace, no problem. Here's how I've customized my tiny workshop for all kinds of home projects. Welcome to my small shop. I do mostly woodworking, auto mechanics, and home repairs, so my workshop space has grown to satisfy my needs. I also have a pretty wide range of hobbies that I enjoy, so uh, the key here is that the shop is very flexible. The space is about 9.5 feet wide by 11 feet deep, and as you can see, I've made use of all the wall space from floor to ceiling. One of the first things I did was I installed pegboard on either side of the door, and I like to keep things grouped by similar things as much as I can. Uh, you can see my battery station over here. I mostly have DeWalt tools, and so having all the same brand makes it very easy to manage batteries and uh, you know make sure I have spares. I put the red caps on after they're charged, so no matter what tool I grab, I always know that I have a charged battery that fits. Now I also love storage, and I have tons of bins, and with all these bins comes labels, lots and lots of labels. And I've come up with the method. I used to make permanent labels, but now I use artist's tape and a Sharpie uh, just because those labels change from time to time. I actually made a uh, document which I'll let you download if you like. I'll put a link in the description if you want to download a text file of all the labels that I'm using here on the different storage bins and drawers. Now, as you can see, some labels have changed over time as your supplies grow or as your needs change. It is uh, really good to change your labels, so just keep in mind that nothing's really permanent. I like this under shelf storage for my lashing straps and my gloves. And you'll see that there's clamps in lots of places where I won't hit my head on them and get in trouble. I also love these clear shoe boxes or storage bins. Um, it lets you see what's inside of them and it lets you keep a cover on it and keep dust out. There are some things that just aren't practical to put in a bin and they sit on a shelf. Glue and adhesives, I like keeping those in a sealed container and uh, these solvents and polishes, I usually take that bin with me. You also notice that I date a lot of things in here. For instance, the epoxy, I want to know when it's opened, so if it dries up, there's no surprises. Here's some more of the DeWalt tools. I also like to use lots of disposable plates and cups for mixing things, mix up some epoxy, throw it all away, and you'll see some tins. Uh, whatever can be recycled down in the shop, I always like to recycle. That includes furniture, supplies, and uh, lots of storage. You'll also see I have a lot of these Craftsman Mechanics toolboxes. Uh, years ago, they were running some really good deals, and I picked up a bunch of these uh, very affordably. And you know, even though they're designed for auto mechanics, they work great for general uh, tools and, and general shop stuff. Um, you know, they're also magnetic, so you could see I have a hydrometer stuck to it, and I have a, uh, a cutter up on top with a magnet. I really like the fact that it's magnetic. I've got my wooden cutting board that used to be in my old kitchen, uh, a junk drawer. you got to have a junk drawer. And then below it, I have storage for tools that are in cases or uh, boxes, so it's pretty easy to get to all of these things. Speaking of recycling, we like these uh, these mats that make your feet happy in the kitchen. When they wear out in the kitchen, of course, they get moved to the shop. Here's my old Craftsman metal workbench. I like this. I've got all my old uh, wiring supplies, television, telephone, electrical. Um, everything fits very nicely in here. And of course, there's bins within drawers and more and more labels. If I don't have a label, then I'll write what things are right on the box. And if I have to put a bunch of things on a shelf, I like to put them within a box so I can slide them out and see exactly what's inside. You'll also see that I utilize the space in between my storage. Um, 
yeah, water heater, it's an electric water heater. Make sure you stay away from a water heater if it's a gas water heater. But right now, I haven't had any heat problems. I use a lot of these um, garbage bins to store all of my, uh, you know, longish items. It keeps them up and out of the way. And speaking of recycling, here's an old dresser, which I've categorized. Um, you don't need a, a workbench drawer for everything. Um, these broad categories have worked very well for me for years. My finishing drawer with sandpapers and swabs and other types of things. Electrical with my tools and my uh, fish tape. And uh, here we are in the caulk drawer. Got my drywall stuff, all my caulk and adhesives. And finally, the plumbing drawer is a catch-all for leftover parts from projects and other plumbing tools. More storage in bins in between uh, my storage areas. And this is my oldest work chest. Uh, not a craftsman, but a popular mechanics. And uh, this was probably what started off my labeling uh, frenzy. Uh, these are some of the original labels. And hey, if you pick good categories for your labels, it lasts you a nice long time. Now, speaking of uh, using vertical space, these are a couple of bicycle hooks meant to hang bicycles like in your garage. And uh, I just cut out these melamine laminated boards and they sit very nicely making a little loft up here that's out of the way. Um, you know, you can just attach these to any uh, structural surface up above, hang the boards. And uh, yeah, it works out well. I like to... Uh, hang my totes and my clamps on these. Since this is a central location, it's great to grab a tote, throw all the tools in it that you need for that project, and then bring the tote to uh, where you're going to be doing your work. All right, here's my uh, some more storage next to my big craftsman stack of tools. And this one is uh, probably my most organized because it's the newest. Again, there's a tote with all of my uh, ratchet wrenches in there various drawers for tools, supplies. And then as my collection grows, you'll see some of the uh, the drawers are unlabeled. Other ones, yeah, what's in here? Oh yeah, my planes. My planes and my jigsaw and other marking tools. Automotive and mechanics. I got more electrical supplies here, power tool accessories. And these are just supplies. I ran out of room, so it becomes a supplies drawer. Don't really need to... Um, label it at this point and more DeWalt tools. And like I mentioned earlier, these um, tool chests are magnetic and so I've made various little magnetic helpers here which I keep next to the drill press at hand. Trusty broom, bandsaw blade out of the way. Now I'll call your attention to these inexpensive angle brackets I've run these all around the perimeter of the back part of the uh, shop and it's really very handy using that space for shelving. Um, you can see some bins that I've put up there. Here's more of the brackets. This time I have attached a long 2x2 two two to the front and this serves as kind of a front shelf for me to store all of my long stock. You know, these are different offcuts and, and pieces that are just impractical to stand on the floor sticking up. So there's some nice horizontal space. Floor space is a premium, and I decided to go with a drill press. Um, I'm using the drill press all the time, as you can see. If you need some instructions, I keep forgetting how to do the depth gauge, so I wrote myself some notes. Post-its are very handy to have around. And uh, instead of getting the floor model, I got the bench top model. And then I made this small rollabout table. It works out well because I have storage here. Uh, the nice thing is, really, if you're putting this drill press on a bench, my opinion is it's it would be too high on top of a bench. So by making this little rollabout cart, I have the extra storage. And it puts it at a very good height. I can't dismiss the importance of having a good step stool, especially since there's so much shelving up by ceiling height. And uh, the other tool decided to dedicate some floor space to is this 10 inch bandsaw. Um, not expensive, 
uh, but I'm getting good use out of it. I like having a stool handy. I have a little uh, hiding place for my router table. And uh, here's my dust collection system. Again, using the wall space, I went with a wall-mounted dust collection system. I have two branches coming off of this. Um, one of the branches is just a four inch hose and I can bring it over here to this uh, dust collection port just to be neat and I also can port it over to the bandsaw. And then this branch goes over to a nice long two and a half inch coiled cord which can reach just about anywhere in the shop helping me pick up you know, wood chips, sawdust and, and helping me keep neat. Um, some more storage, you see my bar clamps to the left. Um, a bin for instructions, I love having that. A bin for parts that are removed. My old manual miter box for when I don't want to pull out the electric one. Can't have too many clamps, of course, and you'll also see that there's various task lights in various places to uh, make sure that everything is well lit. Now I use these melamine scraps on top of my work tables. These, uh, the work tables are gorilla racks, so I have lots of storage, but I like having these melamine surfaces. I can pull it forward if I want to clamp onto it and push it back if I just need to get to the outlets. And here's lots and lots of storage for tools. Uh, here's a recycled art bin that I have all of my AC cords in. And the key is everything is accessible. You can walk around this little peninsula and slide the tops around to suit your needs. The bench vise gets used all the time. That little beer can is there to keep the uh, handle from uh, trashing that press board top. Again, I have more drawer boxes that you can just sort of pull out to get easy access. More storage, vacuums, my uh, cutoff saw couple of tools that I haven't yet dug into and uh, in this blue bin when I get something new if I haven't used it yet I throw the new stuff in here um, because it's things that I know I have for upcoming projects uh, so I don't have a place for it yet or maybe it's going to get used if it's new it goes right in the bin here's one of my favorite tools this is my old Electrolux vacuum cleaner this thing is a beast. Uh, we've gone through probably five other house vacuums. Uh, to give you an idea how old this is, this is the, what is that, the eighth Winter Olympics. That's the Lake Placid edition. Again, more pegboard. Here's some safety stuff. Always a tape measure at hand, hammers. Um, these are things I keep near the door, so if I need to grab something for a project in another part of the house, it is right there. So now I'm going to push that melamine surface back and show you a kind of fun feature. Since this is an open space, it's a shared space, if I want to make sawdust and wood chips, I don't want that getting picked up into the air and, and getting drawn all over the rest of the house. So these two work surfaces part kind of in the middle and I have this floor to ceiling curtain that is just a regular extra long shower curtain. It's on uh, curtain hooks on a piece of conduit and I can basically pull this whole thing shut, engage my jet air filtration system, and this keeps the dust over on this side of the shop. Engage dust collection. And now depending on where I'm working, I have uh, general dust collection and I have lots of attachments which go to the ports on my sanders and my saws and uh, you know basically everything can get hooked up so I can work as dust free as possible to keep the rest of the house clean. I also have a tool wall on the back wall these are my most often used uh, safety items and marking items and I'll probably do a video on my tool wall in the near future. Thank you for making it this far in the video and thank you for joining me in my small basement shop. I hope you found some of the ideas down here helpful. Uh, this really has been a 12 or 13 year project customizing the space and I've gone through many different floor plans 
and uh, I finally came up with this and this is what works for me. So I hope um, you can gain some creative ideas that fit your needs and fit your space. In the meantime, we're also renovating our garage to make it more conducive to woodworking projects and automotive projects. So check out those videos. I will start a playlist called Shop down below. You can check that out. I look forward to your questions and comments. Of course, leave them down below. And if you like this kind of video, please subscribe, turn on post notifications, and uh, give this video a thumbs up. It really does help. Be good, be well, and be safe. And I will talk to you very, very soon. Bye-bye. I fixed it.